Welcome to The Wan Show, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you today, starting, of course, with, oh man, I don't even know, I don't know what to start with. Uh, Intel Alder Lake processors oh. are all of a sudden available at retail, so that's kind of a big deal thing that happened, especially since, uh, according to the latest leaks, they're not supposed to launch for like another two weeks. Speaking of launches, Apple launched what might be the most pro-oriented computer that they've launched since the Mac Pro, which was the most pro-oriented computer that they had launched in years. So we're going to be talking about the new MacBook Pro that is actually for pros again. What else we got? Missouri governor vows to prosecute uh, inspecting element or the F12 key or console or whatever, where you can see HTML on a web page. Uh, kind of awkward. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. Also, EA and FIFA are breaking up. <gasps> Is everyone leaving EA? What? EA and FIFA are breaking up? That's really exciting. Who will I go to for my updated rosters? What if I want to spend too much on setting up a custom roster in a, in a video game? What do I do? I don't know. Let's Pay someone intro. other than EA? No! <laughs> <laughs> <You're> terrible. <laughs> I was so sad. <laughs> the no was great. And the show is brought to you by Corsair, Ridge Wallet, and Ultium. All right, let's jump right into our first topic. And this is one that is not in the dock, but I went impromptu, Linus, and I was like, okay. we are going to talk about this because I am super angry about it. <laughs> so this article is from Digital Trends. There are retailers out there who are evidently already selling Intel 12th generation Alder Lake processors, not only that, but at a cheap price. And it's sort of Hard to argue with the evidence here. So Reddit user Sebi9123 apparently got his or her hands on two 12900K processors. And that looks like a pretty credible looking box shot. So as far as I can tell, individual end users are able to get their hands on these chips. And without disclosing anything that would get me in trouble because of our NDA with Intel, I'm going to say that it is conceivable that end users could have these chips to work on testing or benchmarking them or whatever the case may be before members of the press who have signed non-disclosure agreements with Intel about these processors. On what planet does that make any sense? This also isn't the first time. No. We're getting some major deja vu right now. It's not the first time. It's not even the first time recently. <laughs> Like, I'm not even talking ever. Like, this happened very recently. Yes. <laughs> it drives me absolutely crazy. I give, I mean, to be clear, I, I it's not, how do I make it, how do I explain why this is a problem? Um, because, you know, I think that a lot of people are going to jump straight to spoiled media, the media complaining they don't get a free CPU. It's not about that no it's about making sure that you are following the 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 consumer friendly order of things stuff should not you should not be jumping the gun and opening something up for sale before anyone has an opportunity to review it because in my mind that demonstrates that you have something to hide now to be clear i don't think that Intel is going out of their way to make these chips available to end users before press yeah. are, are able to get an opportunity to review them. Because I think that, especially in a case where you have a product that you're confident in, you want as much media coverage of the thing as possible because you know that it's going to drive demand. Like That is the symbiotic relationship between reviewers and manufacturers. If a manufacturer is genuinely confident in their product, they send it to independent third-party media for evaluation, and those independent third-party media are trusted. Therefore, when they say, yes, it's good, 
that should increase sales. Now, the other side of that, the other, the other edge of that blade is that if manufacturers make something that frankly isn't that competitive, they get called out. But that's just the price that you pay for the credibility boost that you get from these independent media that review your products. So for us to be able to do our job, we need time. It's that simple. Especially if you want reviewers to be able to do a good job. Because there's been a lot of times in the past where reviewers will receive something without enough time to do a thorough investigation, even if you assume that they're working 24 hours around the clock. And that is, that is absolutely something that to me, you know, indicates that a manufacturer might have something to hide. When we get a sample on the Thursday before a long weekend with an embargo lift on the Monday, we look at it and we go, you don't want us to look that closely at this, do you? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. hundred percent. And to, again, to be clear, I don't think that this is Intel's malice showing through. I think that this comes down to incompetence. Um, I think that this is them not having careful enough control of where their where their retail units are going and them not doing a good job of managing managing their partners. To be clear, I'm not saying that they have to go full Nvidia and you literally um, man you talk to an Nvidia Never partner. Go full Nvidia. You have a, you talk to an Nvidia partner of any size and any shape off the record, and they've got the fear of God in them. Like it's just, <laughs> I don't remember the last time there was a major Nvidia GPU, like like retail GPU performance benchmark league, because everyone is terrified whereas intel has demonstrated time and time and time and time again i mean tom's hardware has been has been publishing leaked benchmarks with engineering sample chips since before i was working in the industry (laughs) and they've never stopped getting support of like like proper chips right like they uh, they just they just continue to have the relationship whereas nvidia they will they will go after you. They'll ruin you, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you publish something that you knew you weren't supposed to, you are on the list. Like, you are never, they're, they're never going to talk to you again. And they have an extremely long memory. Um, so I'm not saying that Intel has to go full NVIDIA, but I'm saying that you have to at least respect the results of NVIDIA's approach. <laughs> so there's that. So, yeah, it's, it's really frustrating. Uh, and it's one of those things that is particularly frustrating because we try to play by the rules. Like, we try because it's important for consumers that we are getting access to proper materials, right? So we could go rogue. We could go and buy these chips, right? And then we could go try and get our hands on compatible boards and compatible RAM. In this case, there's a, a new DDR memory generation coming out with the new platform. This is all stuff that is... Alleged, fine. Yeah, Let's they're, say they're it's, not, it's thoroughly leaked. They're not backwards right? compatible, right? Um, or I guess that would be a not, not according to the leaks, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, but the point is that we want to do things properly because we could go out there and we could get our hands on engineering sample chips or on engineering sample boards. But then, what we would not have is we would not have access to necessarily the final product. Yeah. Because if there's a really important microcode update or if that chip that we got that fell off the back of a truck is not a proper chip, like if it's an engineering sample or even a qualification, qualification samples should be basically a retail grade chip. Pretty but there, but yeah. what if it's not, right? So if we went and we published based on that, we could be giving you guys false information. So that's not, it's not in our best interest and it's not in your best interest. It's in our best interest and yours that we are working with Intel. We have the proper BIOS updates. We have the proper drivers and everything is legitimately representative of the product you are going to buy. That's what is best for everyone. But if the partners who play by the rules in order to bring you guys the best, most accurate content are somehow at a two week disadvantage in covering the product, I don't get it. And then, yeah. That's to nobody's benefit. Yeah, then there's no incentive whatsoever to follow the rules. So then everything's just a mess and it's not good for anybody. So I just am, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated and I'm venting my frustration. I realize at this point that there's, 
pretty much nothing that I can do about it because mm -hmm. the really stupid thing is once you have signed an NDA that you won't you know, publish these benchmarks or whatever, even if we got our hands on a chip through like retail means, that is an extremely gray legal area. I mean, we could go to Intel and we could say, you know what? An NDA is invalid the second that that information is available to the general public by means of I someone, believe that is a thing. someone other yeah. than you. Yeah. Absolutely, we could make that argument. And then if Intel really wanted to, they could make our lives a living hell while they fight it out with us in court. Yep. Because... Legal fees are really oppressive. Yes. There, there's this whole mechanic where like, if you have enough money, you can just bury bury someone basically zatharian and floatplane chat asks can you even say if you have review samples yet typically it is uh covered by the nda that you are not allowed to disclose if you have review samples of an upcoming product um jamal taylor says steve did just that and had no issues so steve steve marches to the beat of his own drum yeah um and you gotta you gotta have a lot of respect for steve's approach it's not the same as my approach. Uh, what I would rather is, I would rather complain about systems that don't make any sense and see reform in the industry. I have actually, I have actually seen my feedback to companies like AMD is an example of a company that has taken my frustrated feedback and turned it into new policies that have benefited me and Steve. Um, actually, it was at an event that we were all at that they were they pulled this like really this super weird thing where you weren't allowed oh i forget what exactly the details were but you weren't allowed to have the slide deck without uh without a watermark on it until like 15 minutes before the embargo lift ah uh, cool or something like that one of those like this and, makes sense for written press but not video things. and yeah but they didn't ban cameras in the presentation hall. <laughs> nice. Okay. So leaks went up immediately from the presentation hall from people taking pictures with their phones. And I basically came to them and I was like, look, if I had not played nice, if I had taken pictures, I could be editing my video right now. But I didn't. I played nice. Give me the non-watermarked slides. <laughs> So that I can edit my video and export it. You guys are a computer <laughs> processor company, right? You make computer <laughs> processors. You know that it takes time to process. And I'm in a position where if I have to wait for non-watermarked slides, I'm going to be probably because of the crappy hotel internet, right? I'm going to be two, three hours after the written media. Even with QuickSync. <laughs> how does that make, which is not an AMD product, how does that make oh, right, yeah. any sense? Why am I at a disadvantage? Because I'm trying to play by the rules. What you guys need to do is you need to give me the non-watermarked slides now so that I have time to make a video. So anyway, the point is we have actually seen AMD be more accommodating to video media ever since that conversation. And so that's the way that I prefer to go about things. There are companies that take my feedback and throw it into a fire and just completely do not care. Um, we've run into numerous situations, actually quite recently, with AMD even, where they have even gone as far as to brief us so that we have time to make a video, but then have withheld key pieces of information so we cannot finish and export the video and upload it. Uh, and you guys, you guys saw this, I believe, in one of our recent event coverages with AMD where there was a clip that was spliced into the video after the fact. Um, and actually, there was one with, uh, who was it? I forget who it was. I think it might have been NVIDIA where we had to, yeah, we had to record our review of the product before we had final pricing. And it's like, people got really mad at us for it. And I'm sitting here going, okay, this is, this, I guess, yeah, I made a call. I made a call that we're going to go ahead and, and record it knowing approximately the price, knowing leaked pricing based on, you know, talking to people. Uh, don't, I'm not going to name any names. Like, we had a pretty solid idea. But no, we didn't know. We couldn't read out the exact number. You know, we didn't know if it was going to be a 99 cents or a 98 cents, right? 
Uh, so I made the call. I was like, okay, in, or in, in the interest of having this video up on time, we're going we're gonna to go for it. Um, maybe I made the wrong call. But also, you know, I believe that trusted press that these companies have been working with for, you know, in my case, for some of them, like 10 years, should just have the right information so that we can do our jobs. Because one of the big arguments that I made about the watermark slides was, look, we both look like idiots if I upload this video with watermarks all over the slides. Yeah. We, we both look unprofessional. How about we just all be professional and we have a proper professional working relationship and what's wrong with that? I mean, realistically, the ones leaking the information are not the ones that you should be inviting to your briefings anyway. Just stop. Yeah. I, I, I've, even, I've even proposed, actually, to all three, all red, green, and blue. I've proposed multiple times. Like, have you ever heard of um, oh, what's it called? an elimination diet? Elimination oh, diet? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, so yes. if you haven't, it's, if you're having some kind of allergic reaction, um, you, what you can do is you can go to like a very, very bland, like basically start with one food kind of diet, and then you gradually add things to try it. Try to figure out what it is. Try to figure out what it is that's causing trouble for you. And um, I, I've proposed, I've said like, look, why don't, you just guys, why don't you guys just go full elimination diet here? Give your news to just a very, very select few, and then gradually expand and expand and expand the circle until you figure out who is selling information to leaker sites. And uh, no, no one's taken me up on it because I think the, the cost and hassle of running a program like that, when there is a clear, nobody ever wants to talk about it, but when there's a clear benefit to leaking, particularly for a hot or anticipated product, it's clearly not worth it. But it's one of those things where it's like, okay, fine, then embrace it. Yeah. Fine then. If you know that all this information is going to be out there, then why don't you just seed us at the same time? And then we can all leak it. Like we can all just say, hey, these are early benchmarks with engineering sample chips. Like I, and that's fun, whatever. Which like, would be fine too. Yeah, yeah. I, I always bring up the story of NVIDIA where like, and you know this one because I called you and you're like, why are you calling me? Because we had just had this conversation about how I needed to do these events more solo. <laughs> we, had, we had this conversation about how I needed to be able to be <laughs> more of my like own ship when I was doing these events. Yeah. So I knew I was supposed to not, bother Linus while I was down here. I was like, okay, the idea was that when Luke's out of office, it was it was a big opportunity cost, right? Because he wasn't producing the two or three videos he might be producing in the span of like, we got the travel day, then you got the event day. Sometimes there was like like a like a press like event thing and like another travel day. He's out of office like all week. There's like this enormous so opportunity to not cost. distract the only other person that can make videos yes like it totally it makes sense i'm not so but i knew i wasn't supposed to call linus but then just like everything possible to not use that particular word was hitting the fan and i was like okay <laughs> i actually think i need to call linus and like he ends up talking to one of their very high up press people on the phone and being like what the heck like you guys need to figure this out and that was really helpful and i kyle ended up filming his video like out on the street i ended up filming my video while they were tearing the event down they had specifically bussed us out to a location where we like couldn't edit or upload properly yeah. um and there was like no reasonable way for us to get back and like and it was really far from our hotel and, like all it was it was horrible and very specifically set up to be oppressive towards media like that was the goal and you could tell um and it was brutal it was terrible yeah and you could see like we weren't the only ones there was all these different outlets like trying to figure out how to do this in the most like non-clean way effectively but yeah. like but barely somehow able to get your video out still it was, it was such a mess yeah so annoying really frustrating and the, the it's just unnecessary i mean there's yeah. people that are like linus thinks that people should just like be so happy when he gives them a suggestion or something like that it's like no it's not it's not that it's about just being decent like recognizing that when you launch a product at uh, you know, on December, you know, twentieth or something, that a lot of people have stuff going on around that time of year, and maybe that's actually really rude. And maybe what you should do is you should give a slightly longer embargo. Or here's a crazy idea: get us the product a little bit early so that we have some extra time. Or I mean, the example that I gave of launching something around a long weekend. 
even if I wanted to pay the overtime, which we've done, we've done it when we've had to, recognize, like maybe say sorry, maybe say, hey, sorry, I know that not only is this costing your organization way more money than it has to in order to cover it, um, which we're not reimbursing you in any way for because there's no cash changing hands. This is a product review, and obviously. There, there needs to be no cash changing hands. And there hands. needs yeah. to be no cash changing hands. Yeah. Uh, maybe acknowledge that you are, you are costing our organization a bunch of money. And not just that, but there's a human element. What if Anthony wanted to do something else this weekend? Did you ever stop to consider that maybe Anthony has a life and maybe Brandon or David has a life? and doesn't want to come in on a Saturday and film this video. Did you, did you ever consider that? And it just feels like there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of just, hey, couldn't this whole thing be better for everyone if we tried to work with each other and we tried to, and we tried to be respectful of each other's time? Uh, that, that's the big thing. That, yeah. That's the big thing for me, is it just doesn't seem that hard to be respectful of each other's time. Um, I believe it was the 1080 launch, uh, I, I, R, F, T, W. Um, cause basically that was, that was at a time that, um, or was it 980 TI? What I can't you, remember the, the event that you attended. Mm. I believe it was, was it the one that was right before workcation? No. Oh, it was a different one. Um, cause that one was a gong show too. Wasn't that one it? was also a gong show. Yeah. That was 1080. Um, Got it. Okay. The, I, it was not that one though. I don't actually remember what it was. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't. I think it was 980 or 980 Ti, something like that. I know I went to 980, so okay. it might have been might have been 980 Ti then, because I remember going to 980. Okay. But um, yeah, it was just basically you know Nvidia went through a phase, and I'm not sure if they're over it, but they went through a phase where they were really pushing to control the narrative around their products and be the ones that people learned about anything from. It was kind of a um, I mean, you've seen them kind of figure out how much or how little they need partners over the years, uh, you know, whether it's launching Founders Edition cards, uh, you know, built by NVIDIA graphics cards, rather than focusing entirely on uh, on partner built cards or, or you know, whatever. Right. Like you've seen them kind of push the limits of how much could we just do all this ourselves and capture all the value ourselves? Do do we actually need media at all? I, I don't know. Hard to say. Um, so that was that was around that was around the time that there were a lot of initiatives where they were just kind of trying to control the narrative, and it was I think it was basically that they didn't give you guys any information. They revealed everything on stage, so you were basically just a live audience watching what could have been a live stream that you could have just watched from the comfort of your office or home, and then reported on from the comfort of your office or home. But instead, they dragged you out to this thing, gave you no information until they gave it to everyone, and then you're in this position where you. You then can't do any work. Yeah, we, we were in the basement below where the event was actually going to happen. <clears throat> and they didn't give us key information until the live stream. So, yeah, we were, we were just stuck sitting there. It was, it was really annoying. Uh, uh, Anthony says it was apparently 1080 Ti. Somehow Anthony remembers this better than you and me. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> what a king. <laughs> Anthony, you don't have to be monitoring the WAN show. It's oh, did, the weekend, baby. Did 1080i come out first? No, 1080 was first. Oh, weird. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Um, all right, why don't we move on to our next topic? Hey, you know who is you know who is turning over a new leaf? Who? Apple. Oh. I mean, what? We went through this period with Apple where it felt like it was design first over functionality to the point of. Oh just being ridiculous. I know someone who's upset about the ports. I had that same reaction. <laughs> I was very surprised. I was very, very surprised. Let's get to that in a moment. Okay. <laughs> First, <laughs> let's talk about how Apple has gone full circle, the other, or full circle, full swing the other way and made a MacBook Pro that really really does look designed for pros without coming out and just saying we're sorry are bad <laughs> they've pretty much said it the touch bar is gone uh the webcam is now 1080p the crappy keyboard is gone i mean that's that's not new but that's uh, yeah, but what was it? Last gen, I think. So yeah. the the crappy keyboard is now gone. The ports are back. Basically, 
every move that Apple has made over the last five, six years, seemingly for the sole purpose of antagonizing professional users, is gone. Can we just, can we just... Yeah, 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 I'm down. I mean, they still need to figure out yeah. their right to repair stuff. Yeah, they still need to figure out how to cases. not be so far up their own rectums that it's really hard to listen to them talk. There's there's certain things that Apple could do to fix up their attitude, but but antagonizing professionals for no reason is no longer one of them. So they've got two new SOCs announced, M1 Pro and M1 Max. Okay. That's the stupidest thing ever. Uh, their naming schemes for a company that spends the amount that they do on marketing. They didn't foresee the problem with having Max that are Max. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rough. <laughs> that's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, I remember, uh. I remember when Apple would, would be openly disdainful <laughs> of companies like Samsung having all these different confusing models no no we have iphone no no now you got you got your you got your se you got your your pro you got your pro max, max. you got all your uh. different you got all your different suffixes you're no better than intel at this point okay you're a little better than intel no no you're worse than intel uh, i take it back i was gonna say you're better than intel because intel's product names are just <laughs> utterly undecipherable like uh, especially at the server level those are what am you even looking at i have no idea <laughs> um but at least what intel manages to do is put a generational number on things and like at least somewhat attempt to categorize things yeah, even now though it's that just becomes like, messy all the time new macbook pro like new I, MacBook Pro Plus, they gotta do that. Uh, That'd be great. <laughs> be I so hate good. It. <laughs> There's two new SOCs: M1 Pro, M1 Max. And despite not now having fine print showing what computers the company is comparing itself against, Apple's charts were as obtuse as ever, with an axis labeled as relative performance. What nice. does that even mean? Uh, they had a lot of emphasis on power efficiency uh, with both SOCs featuring a CPU with eight high performance cores and two efficiency cores totaling 10. Though it should be noted that the base SKU has eight cores. There are actually a ton of different variants. In spite of the fact that Apple is soldering everything right to the mainboard, I actually think they did an outstanding job of providing a reasonable degree of choice when it comes to CPU, GPU, and memory configurations. So much choice, in fact, that it ended up costing me about as much as a decent car because I told the guys internally, I was like, look, here's something we can do because Apple doesn't see this product, right? So we have no opportunity to review a Mac um, you know, on the same review schedule as other media. So I said, okay, look, here's how we're gonna stand out. We're gonna buy every config. We're going to review the configs that oh. Apple doesn't want to cede to the press. <laughs> so I spent like $25,000 on MacBooks earlier oh. uh, this week. Okay, nice. So that was, uh, Sheesh. That was a heck of a thing. Uh, the good news is we, we can just flip them. Like the, they should hold their value reasonably well. Uh, but yeah, you can expect to see. So, so it cost me a lot of money, but respect to Apple for at least having a lot of different configurations. So M1 Pro is available with 16 or 32 gigs of unified LPDDR5 memory with a bandwidth of 200 gigabytes per second. It's available with a 14 or 16 core GPU. And then there's a media engine that provides hardware encode and decode acceleration of H.264, HEVC, and all the ProRes. So basically, you know that weird afterburner card, which I think is truly, if not the weirdest, one of the weirdest products that Apple has released in the last 10 years. What a weird product that thought thing it was, was cool but weird super yeah. cool but yeah. it's the kind of thing that i would expect some some you know weird like off the wall silicon valley yes. startup yes. to make yeah some not, fly by night thing that's yeah. like probably not going to exist in five years but yeah. two years let alone yeah. five like yeah. it's yeah. what a weird product that was <laughs> um and now it's now it's gone because <laughs> it's built into the M1 silicon. I can drive two Pro Display XDRs, and then the M1 Max doubles the GPU cores. Um, all you got to do is look at the pictures. It is a man. It is a big chip. Uh, M1 Max looks amazing. So it doubles the GPU cores. It's available with 24 or 32. Memory gets doubled as well. So it's 32 or 64 gigs of unified memory with 
400 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, whew, the media engine is doubled and it gets double the display output. So uh, three 6K displays Dang. with a single 4K display is how I'm reading this. Uh, this is from Jonathan Horst's notes. So correct me if I've got the display bit wrong. It looks like he's got it annotated in a bit of a weird way. Now, let's talk about the ports. HDMI is back. SD card reader is back. MagSafe is back. Why Very did cool. they ever get rid of MagSafe? Yeah. Even if you could charge via USB Type-C, MagSafe should have stayed. MagSafe was so cool. Yeah. It was one of those things that even as a PC guy, I looked at and I went, I am so jealous. That is so awesome. And I think everyone did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it, was, it was genuinely really cool. You're one of the to only... To the point where so many different cable companies ripped it off. Yeah. Because of because of the patents that are held by Apple and Microsoft, they were one of the only two companies in the world that could ship laptops with these magnetic power connectors, and they just refused to do it because, pfft, like, <laughs> no, don't do that. Yeah. So MagSafe is back, and I want to talk about ports. Who do you know who complained that ports are back? I don't know if they want to be named right Can now. Can I slap them? <laughs> oh, no, that would be employee abuse. <laughs> Wait, this is someone internal? Yeah. Name them. Their, argu <laughs> their, their argument is that uh, being an M1 Mac user currently... Um, I don't want to give too much information. Um, they already have all the dongles and stuff that they need. They had to buy all this stuff already. They would prefer to have more USB-C ports instead of the like HDMI or SD card or whatever. They would rather replace those things with more USB-C ports so they can continue the expandability of their laptop through the already current dongles that they own. I don't agree with them if it helps. Because if they have those dongles, it's not like they have no USB-C ports. Yes. And you can still expand by a lot with one dongle. So if you have more than one, you can expand by a huge amount. Having built in HDMI is it a fantastic idea. I probably wouldn't use the SD card slot a lot, but I would use it sometimes. And it's pretty annoying needing to go try to find a reader. Especially, I mean, either you use it a lot or you use it rarely. And in both of those cases, it's really annoying when it's not readily available. Yeah. <clears throat> trying to figure out who it is <laughs> <laughs> so you want everyone else's life to suck because your life sucks <laughs> apparently he likes the hdmi and mag safe only has a problem with the sd uh, i mean i actually do not entirely disagree that the sd card reader was the least necessary of those things to I, bring back i do think to so i would argue a like appearance and and goal thing apple always kind of wanted to be the creator platform and i think over the last bit they've been letting that go slightly mm -hmm. and i think maybe this is them trying to grab it back again this is them trying to like you know peace offering hey please please come back we really do care about you i would have rather had a type a port personally than an sd card slot um, just there's so many peripherals and you just you just want to plug in like a mouse for two seconds I, I don't want to go dig another stupid thing out of my bag in fact I don't even want to carry another stupid thing around in my bag it would be really nice to to have uh, a USB type a port that's that's what I would have preferred over an SD card slot and the reason for that I, my, my justification for that is that outside of the photography space SD is not the be all and end all anymore. Um, CFast is out there. We've got CF Express. We've got uh, Red Mags. Like there's there's all these different uh, media standards. And SD, while it is still absolutely the standard when it comes to photography, is not. Yeah, it, it's it's not the end game anymore when it comes to uh, to video recording. So, I uh, I see where they're coming from. I'd still rather have the SD card slot than not have it, though. So you don't want to smack them anymore? Uh, oh, I... All right, I won't smack them. Who is it? It's Jaden. 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 <laughs> he, ha he has a good point, sort of. No, I, I, like the, I like the type A argument a lot more. And he did say in response, he said 100% to the type A instead. 
Oh yeah, I haven't been watching Float Plane Chat. It's me. This is obvious. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that obvious. I actually don't know what mobile devices we have. A, a fair number of Mac users of, now, Jaden. Yeah. Like there's there's Horst, Sarah, Lloyd. Off the top of my head, uh, Jake Daily drives a MacBook. Not an M1, but like there. That's that's four. Uh, Mark and Andy are both heavy Mac users. So the two of our editors. That is half a dozen people. I have no idea what kind of computers like logistics uses. I mean, okay, I know there's no way Kalanen uses a Mac. but like, I can understand when you're very yeah. port limited and one of them is a port that you will never use, yeah. wishing that that port was something else. I, sure. th I think the type A argument is is probably stronger than the another type C argument, but I can kind of understand it to a little bit. It, HDMI is not a waste. I would rather plug HDMI directly into a computer than dongle it out. 100%. Dongling yeah. it is a pain yeah. in the butt because it's something that... I use all the time. Now let's talk it's about- It's also a heavy cable, generally. Yes, and it puts like, a lot of strain on a yes. Type-C port. Yeah, It's nice to have that nice, secure, and I'm really glad they went full-sized HDMI because mini HDMI and micro HDMI today. are both pieces of garbage. Um, all right, so HDMI 2.0 though. HDMI 2.0, should this be acceptable in this day and age? I thought that was pretty disappointing. Yeah, I was pretty annoyed about that. I'm going to play devil's advocate and say I don't care. It probably doesn't matter. But yeah. I still don't think if you're buying a, a somewhat bleeding edge product that it should come with uh, the, the previous generation of a connector. So HDMI 2.0 is good for 4K60, which is the only thing that you are realistically going to plug this computer into in a, in a like professional work environment for the foreseeable future. Because if you wanted to go 4K 120 or five or six K or whatever, you got your, uh, you know, uh, uh, XDR display or whatever, right? So you wanna plug into something else, you're gonna use one of your Type-C connectors. You're not going to be using HDMI. So it's not like the laptop doesn't have the capability of driving these higher resolution or higher refresh rate displays. It's just that, yeah, you might need a, a special, you might need a special cable for it or, or something like that. Cause it's not like there won't be Thunderbolt or, or rather uh, display port to HDMI 2.1 dongles. In fact, I believe uh, type C display port to HDMI 2.1. I believe these already exist. Don't quote me on that. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba, 4K 120 Hertz and 8K. Yep, here it is. So that was, that was super easy to find. And I think that if you are one of the very few people that is gonna be driving a 4K 120 Hertz display off of your MacBook, this is a fine solution for $38.99. That's Canadian, so it's like 30 bucks US. There, devil's advocate. I think from a functionality perspective, it's not gonna to matter to the vast majority of people. You're a professor, you do lectures or whatever, you plug into your projection system. I agree, it just doesn't feel like complete or clean. Like I don't, I don't understand why you would bother step it down. I mean, when it's already on such an expensive device, like why not just give them the? When it comes to display connectivity on this thing, it's not the most incomplete thing. That's fair. Let's talk about the notch. Oh. oh. <laughs> now I've seen arguments a couple of different ways for the notch. One of the ways that I've seen it is Apple's got to make room for when they add Face ID. Okay, that's a really, really stupid argument. Yeah. Wow. Because don't, of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no offense, but you're an idiot. <laughs> No offense, no offense, but you're, you're actually like defective because if the feature is not there, then no, they do not in fact need to leave room for it. <laughs> That's the worst. That's the worst take ever. Okay, but I have actually seen some pretty solid arguments for it. So let me, let me hit you with some of these. Without the notch space, it is a 16 by 10 display, which is already great. Yes. So... Everything to the left and the right of the notch is bonus, and you should view it as such. Okay, thoughts? Uh, I feel like a lot of content is going to struggle with that notch. Um, like, what, what if you full, like, uh, that uh, screen with an aspect ratio doesn't mean that you have bonus screen space. Screen with an aspect ratio means that a lot of things are going to feel weird on your computer. Okay. All right. Now, now let me, uh, let me, let me hit you again. This is another of the more solid arguments that I've heard for the notch. It happens to be exactly the number of pixels in height as the top bar on the Mac, something that you're basically 
stuck with, except when you're viewing full screen content, the vast majority of which will be 16 by nine, if we're talking about content consumption, or even narrower. So there, there's another argument for that the notch is really not in the way, it's just giving you extra bonus screen real estate that you otherwise wouldn't have. Um, my thing is how, how aesthetically unpleasing it is when I'm not watching something full screen. Uh, I've, I've used a decent amount of, of phones with notches on them for, to be completely honest, a relatively short period of time. Um, and when you full screen something, especially if it would like black bar on the side or if it has a dark background, it's not really that big of a problem. Mm -hmm. But it's awkward and weird to use when I'm not doing that. When I'm doing other things, it like looks bad or, or, or whatever else. That's my main complaint with notches. So the best argument that I think I've heard, and not the best in terms of... Um like the most carefully balanced, you know, oh, people well are mentioning that argument. we need to point out that you have framework investment. Oh, sure. Yes. Yes. I'm invested in framework. The best argument that I have heard for the notch is that for better or for worse, Apple, and this is really a big part of where my initial discussion came from. Apple has clearly telegraphed that they are willing to put function before form. <laughs> Yeah, because it because it doesn't look good. That that was my whole yeah. Because yeah. it looks terrible. It looks really bad. And they've someone there has to know that that it looks terrible. And uh, I think there's I think there's even more elegant ways to accomplish. Like you were saying, it ha it's so big because it it or you were mentioning that one of the arguments. Sorry, was that it's so big that it has to accommodate Face ID or whatever. Which is yeah. I mean, we've you've said your opinion on that one, and I agree. Um, <laughs> But there, there's, look at phones. There's way more elegant ways to do it. If they did like a punch hole thing, I still would have not liked it. Yeah. But it would have been more elegant. It would have been a better solution. Instead of this like massive block, which there's like no way they need that much space. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, well, that's... Laptop webcams are trash anyways. To be I, clear. I was almost wondering at a certain point when they would just leave the webcam behind. No. Because at too much of Apple's product positioning is around connecting people. Okay, yeah. And so yeah. a lot of what they, I mean, FaceTime is such a is such a big push for them over the last. I mean, when did FaceTime come out? I can't even it's remember. Been quite a iPhone while 4s or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's I, been a long time. Yeah, I don't I don't remember anymore. But it was a long long time ago. And honestly, I I'm with them. I think you've got to keep the webcam. I do too. I was just, I, I thought if someone would ditch it, it would be Apple, but I think you're right about the connecting people thing. Someone in full plane chat said, or lazy elephant in full plane chat said, is the webcam not getting better? I believe it, it is. is getting better. Yep. But if you hear the specs, it sounds like it's getting better to like a 2008 standard. Well, it depends, right? Because if you want to compare against, uh, you know, other uh, laptop webcams. Yeah, you want to compare yeah. against Dell's extremely high screen to bezel ratio, uh, high screen to bezel ratio laptops. It's, um, uh, it's way better. Yeah, than it's, it's, where it's genuinely difficult to get like nice high performance webcams in a bezel that is really small, which yeah. is why I understand why they have this big blocky thing. You know what? I'm kind of yeah. surprised that no one's done. Like what I, I mean, you know, maybe I wouldn't have preferred it. Maybe I would have criticized it. Um, but maybe I would have preferred uh, like a tab. Rather than have the entire laptop be completely rectangular, mm. have the webcam be a bump. There's examples of that that's yeah. happened before. Um, I think that was much more of a old school thing. I think Apple people would hate it. You think so? More I than so. having a chunk out of your display. It's not this like perfect clean. Neither is having a chunk out of your display. I think yeah. if Apple presented it as the best thing ever, if we if if they accepted a notch in the display, I don't see why they wouldn't accept a bump out of the display. Like I don't, I, I don't see the difference. Yeah, yeah I, I think people wouldn't like it. I, I think messing with the the body and the external aesthetic of the computer would would because they're status symbol things, right? Yeah, but remember, I guess I mean Apple could probably find a way to make it so that like oh it's a status symbol to have the bump. Of course they could. Yeah. I mean they managed to turn it into a status symbol to have a different color background on your stupid text messages. I mean like <laughs> let's get real here, right? Yeah. It's it's not about what it is, it's about what it represents. And if what it represented 
was, hey, I've got the latest gen MacBook that has this like banging, you know, awesome webcam in it or whatever. I think they probably could have gotten away with that. Conrad says, I like the notch. I think it is giving you more screen area um, rather than taking away a small area. It's it's that's what Linus was just saying though. It's they're they're going for function over form. Yep, absolutely. Because that argument is that argument is purely I'm getting more screen area, which is which is fine, and there is a positive argument for that. But that's a very kind of not Apple approach. I mean, except when you know they pulled the same thing when with the iPhone is. 10 and put a notch on that display. I mean, it's like there's clearly a there's clearly a precedent for this. Yeah. Um, there's other really good things about the display. I mean, it's got the same mini LED back uh, backlight as their other XDR screens, or the, at least the same approach. I haven't actually looked at exactly what the performance is like. We're not hands-on with it yet, but it looks freaking looks freaking awesome on paper uh it's got a high refresh rate uh, it's got it's high refresh rate so it runs it up to 120 hertz and more importantly it seems to be adaptive anywhere from 24 to 120 hertz that's going to be great for battery life and for i mean dare i say it gaming on a mac hey so. they've got apple arcade there are games you can play, you can play on a mac games on your mac you could I was about to say you could you could run Windows. No, you can't. Um, <laughs> the SSDs are up to seven point four gigabytes per second. That's utterly meaningless, um, other than just that it tells us they're running on PCIe Gen four. It doesn't it doesn't actually tell us how the controller handles uh, random transactions, which is really more meaningful in terms of real world performance. I had a good question in the Floatplane chat. I've scrolled way past it now, but. Uh, someone was like, hey, would you guys consider, you know, editing on M1 Max? And I think I think it was Max MAX, like the, the top end M1 Max. Right. Yeah. Ugh! Um, Already annoying. Editing on M1 Max, do you guys use ProRes? Uh, we are a premier shop for the time being. And right now we're shooting on Sony. So, no, we're not recording in ProRes. And I think we're going to be moving completely over to Sony cameras. The The performance, especially in challenging lighting conditions, is just outstanding. So there would be there would be no reason for us to make a move right now like that. Um, and at any rate, we, we would not be using notebooks for that. We'd be waiting to see what Apple comes out with for a desktop. And I think the... The entire professional community is waiting with bated breath to see where Apple goes with the Mac Pro. I'm, I'm going to come out and say I wouldn't actually be that surprised if they did one more generation of Intel-based Mac Pro. Cascade Lake, or excuse me, Cascade Lake, no, not Cascade Lake, Sapphire Rapids is the upcoming Intel Xeon architecture, and the word on the street is that Sapphire Rapids is going to be pretty ballin'. So that would allow them to, without doing a complete redesign, release an updated Mac Pro that maintains compatibility for, you know, Afterburner and whatever other whatever other workflows people have built around that particular machine. Yeah, and and I I, I wouldn't be too surprised either because I know Gelsinger is trying to make it a thing. Yeah. Um, five days ago, Gelsinger mentioned i i this isn't in the docs i don't i don't have this like perfectly uh, in front of Pat me but gelsinger intel ceo yes uh mentioned that he wants he wants intel back he wants or to be apple or, sorry back. apple back he wants to be working with apple I mean, he got intel back he, he did <laughs> yeah mission accomplished yeah R round two good job everyone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pack it up <laughs> we're going home we, we did it um yeah. but yeah he wants he wants apple back so um i mean they're kind of already going down the m1 line i don't think they're going to abandon that necessarily but nope. um not in mobile not anytime soon yeah but there's other options so oh people are freaking out over us changing cameras uh, total wire says what happened to the black magic cameras honestly they're just the the footage is heavy um there's no clear image quality benefit going from 8k to 12k at least not on that sensor uh they don't perform well in low light uh we're just what about the reds? Uh, recording to over USB-C to SSDs has been extremely flaky. 
As for the reds, we are going to hold on to two of our three reds, uh, two of our four reds. We've got a V-Raptor, we've got a DSMC-2, we've got a weapon, and we've got an Epic W. We are going to ditch the Epic W, and we're going to ditch the V-Raptor because we don't feel like acquiring new media. Um, and we've got a ton of accessories for the old reds, but I think that in terms of day-to-day -day shoots, they're probably not going to see a lot of mileage anymore. I mean, we've got a ton of hours on those cameras. They have absolutely... They have served They've us done some work. Yeah. extremely For well, sure. and they're still going to continue to be useful because if we want to do something like a car shoot, everyone, everyone is set up for Red DSMC2, uh, which is the same body size and shape as the Epic W and the weapon. Uh, so when, when we hire out a crew to man a camera car, like we're going to put the Red on it because we don't want to screw around, yeah. you know? Um, you don't want to waste everybody's time. So we're going we're gonna to hold on to two of our 8K reds, one of which does 8K60. It's not which... ditching $50,000 worth of cameras. Oh, no, they both do 8K60. Yeah, we're not ditched. They're not what being ditched. What? Someone, someone in chat is like, Lan is casually talking about uh, ditching $50,000 worth of cameras. Like, nah, dude. That's, <laughs> that's I'm, not how anything works. I'm going to sell them, dog. <laughs> yeah. What do you think this is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. They're all I didn't going... even have to like know that. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> No way that's going to be a thing. They're all going up for sale. Yeah. Uh, I think Brandon wants to keep a Blackmagic pocket around, but I think that's going to be that's going to be the end. Yep. So we're going uh, FX, FX6, I think, is going to be our main workhorse. FX6, Sony. I, I can't remember the models. Their, their models are confusing to me. But basically, it's the A7S3 sensor in uh, a more flexible body with more I.O. and more controls and all that kind of stuff. We're going to have a, an A7S3 or 2. And then I believe there's one other body size that uses a very similar sensor. And they, they talked me into getting one of those or something, I think. I, I can't remember the exact details, but we're going to come out not too far behind because um, the Sonys are, are priced really well. And there's a sort of camera shortage right now. So we're going to be able to take advantage of that to get rid of some of our cameras at not as much of a loss as yeah, we would have had to take. Yeah. So... Yeah, at least we won't eat it too hard on some of those some of those mistakes that we made. Yeah, uh, do we want to finish off the Apple stuff? Do you want to talk about AirPods and Home HomePod Mini, anything like that? Yeah, AirPods third gen look great. Uh, MagSafe charging fixes one of the only problems I have with Apple's wireless charging on their headphones. Just kind of, I mean, I don't have this problem because I'm actually using that um, that put it anywhere you want pad that we got. That was actually the first mm. short circuit video. I took it home because I was like, this thing's great. You just chuck it on it and it just charges. Um, so I use I use that. But if you're using a regular Qi charging pad, you kind of have to play around with it to get it in just the right spot. And MagSafe is great for that. Um, I, I like the shape. I think the Pro shape is way more comfortable than the AirPods first and second gen shape. Um, and the shape looks extremely similar, maybe the same. I haven't looked that closely at it. Uh, I'll definitely check them out. I, I want to review them because as much as you'll pry my AirPods Pros from my cold dead hands, um, man, that active noise cancellation. Uh, I'd be really interested to try out the new adaptive EQ. Um, longer battery life sounds great. To be clear, actually, you know what? I, and again, this is, I got to include some disclosure here because LG did sponsor the video about them, but their latest tone freeze, outstanding, extremely comfortable. I'd say that they are the closest thing to AirPods Pro comfort that I have yet encountered. And the only reason that I haven't tried to daily drive them because they are a way better experience on Android. Uh, LG's app is not perfect, but it's a lot better than uh, the company basically... <clears throat> Uh, maliciously going out of their way to make the product not as functional on your phone. Yeah. Um, so I, the only reason I'm not daily driving them is that Ploof, who was the writer for that video, immediately after we stopped filming it, was like, wow, you kind of sold me. Can I can I take these on like my trip I'm going on and try them? I was like, oh, yeah, I was going to take them, but yeah, sure, I mean, <laughs> you did all the work, so... <laughs> So I really want to try out the Tone Freeze. Again, disclosure, they sponsored the video on it, but they're not sponsoring this. Um, they sound really solid, and they're extremely comfortable. So I'm, I'm really excited to see the new third-gen AirPods because they look like they're going to be really comfortable. HomePod Mini, who cares? Apple Music. Uh, oh, yeah, right, the cheap voice plan, so you can only use Siri. That sounds like the kind of thing that's just extremely broken really weird yeah if siri was so great why is it cheaper and why are you that's why, a really weird why are you inconveniencing your customer who pays you yeah 
It's a like, really, really, really awkward limitation. If you can, if you can afford to license the music, like if you can afford to pay the licensing cost of the music to stream to this customer, then at that price, then shouldn't they just be able to listen to the music they want to listen to? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's really odd. Yeah, it was really odd. Almost as odd as if I were to forget to talk about our sponsors. Let's you uh, got them. Let's let's talk about let's talk about our sponsors for the WAN show today. We've got ah uh, oh hold on a second. Who we got? Oh wait, no, this is not. Oh oh no, this is not right. Sponsor frames. Here we go. Hey, we're starting with Corsair. That's right. Corsair has a monitor now. They recently oh. launched their first gaming monitor, the Xenion. And Corsair, I love you. You're sponsoring this segment, but what were you thinking with that name? That's what we need. That's what we need. We need more things <laughs> in the industry with a name super close to Xeon. <laughs> um, anyway, their first get that doesn't mean the product is a problem. So it's an ultra slim 32 inch QHD IPS panel. QHD really is, in my opinion, the optimal resolution for a gaming monitor right now. Uh, it gets you nice high refresh rate. So it's 165 hertz refresh rate, um, but without the noticeable pixelation that you'd get from a 1080p panel. It's got quantum dot with 100% coverage of sRGB, Adobe RGB, and then 98% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. Uh, that's for more vivid natural colors, and you can mount your camera, mic, or lighting with an integrated multi-mount point that's built right into the aluminum stand. So you can learn more at the link in the video description. That's lmg.gg slash xenion. Man, on, on, their, on their page for this monitor, they have, uh, they have someone playing a racing game with a mouse and keyboard. Come on. Oh, hold on. Can I? Wait, they do? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Can you show me this? I don't think Corsair has controllers. Maybe that's why. They do. They own Scuff. Oh, yeah. Why isn't he using a Scuff controller? Guys, what's going on? You know what it probably is? Is It's probably... It's a green screened game? Yeah, it's it's probably yeah. So just put like, something that isn't a racing game there. <laughs> I mean... Because this guy's very convincingly gaming. Okay, hold on, hold on. Maybe this is supposed to be... I'm. Uh, you know what? I'm going devil's advocate here. Maybe this is supposed to be more of like an open world exploration game where the character happened to get into a car. You ever think of that? Smart guy? Maybe there's a shooting element to this game. Just have both plugged in. Oh, who does that? I do that. You're such a nerd. Yeah. And the show is also brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Stop carrying around <laughs> pointless items in your pocket like receipts, old hotel room keys, or spent gift cards. Ridge Wallet helps you carry less. It's a two metal plate elastic band wallet that keeps your cards tightly together, but still easily accessible. It's RFID blocking, it's got a lifetime guarantee, and it's available in aluminum, carbon fiber, and titanium. So you can get like the super, the super sick finished ones that look freaking awesome. And they don't just sell wallets, they've got battery banks, bags, smartphone covers, and more. And if you use offer code WAN, you can get 10% off everything at ridge.com slash WAN. Finally, the show is brought to you by Altium. Thank you, Altium, for sponsoring today's video. Altium Designer enables engineers to connect with every facet of the electronics design process. Wait a minute. I know Altium. Have we worked with these guys before? Uh, I did not recognize the name on the docs. So. Yeah. They, oh, man. Their stuff is sick. Uh, hold on a second. You know what? I, I think I was on their blog uh, the other just the other day. Hold on. Altium blog DDR5. I think it was their blog. Uh, apparently, it's not a blog. It's, it's, it looks like a blog and it smells like a blog, but it's, uh, it's not called a blog. It's called resources.altium.com. Super cool. So I was looking at, uh, actually, yeah, I think it was exactly this article that's just a, a good look into what some of the challenges are with uh, getting clean signals on DDR5 memory modules because of the extremely high um, high signaling speeds. So yeah, that's, uh, wow, that's, that's super cool. Apparently they're a sponsor of the WAN show now. So Altium Designer enables engineers to connect with every facet of the electronics design process. It's intuitive. You can interact in a 3D environment. It features interactive routing. Uh, this is not in my talking points, but it allows you to run simulations to see if you're gonna run into uh, interference problems before you've even built a board. Uh, you can, they've got Altium 365, which allows multiple people to work on the same project at once. You can get a, get a free trial today at the link in the video there's description. Some, there's some people in, in full plane chat being like, whoa, what? I use this at work. 
<laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, no, no jerky eating today. Unfortunately, Savage Jerky is not a sponsor today. Man, I'm. You know what? I I am so I'm not supposed to eat the jerky that they send me except on on stream. But I was I was like gaming the other night. And I was just like I mowed down an entire pack of the maple buffalo bacon. Which speaking of the Linux challenge, I don't know if you saw my my Steam message last night. What? No, I didn't. There's another. So okay. So we've we've brought up that not only do I I probably game significantly more than Linus. Yeah. So I spend more time on it. Anyways, oh, you're not gonna go after me for this, are you? That's it. so stupid. I also work on it. <laughs> but I'm not going after you for it. You're going clear. after the fact that you're bringing it up means you're going after me for it. Linus has a separate computer that he plays VR games on. What would you have I me can't, do? I can't play VR games. What would you have me do? What would you have me do? I would. I would. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't get to turn this around. What would you have me do? You got to take a month off. What? Okay, look, Beat Saber is part of my exercise regimen. <laughs> seriously i'm not even okay okay so would you have me my, okay my lighthouses are literally wired into my attic space they are under 18 inches of blown cellulose insulation now all the wiring for it what would you have me do you don't have do i have to move out. them why no. what, what do you mean why do you, you, you would have, to move them. have you seen my personal gaming machine would yeah. you have me carry it downstairs? You could you could wire that one. You could uh, reformat your your media center PC to Linux. <laughs> I don't actually want you to. I just wanted to complain. I don't want, I don't actually want anything to change. I was streaming Beat Saber last <laughs> night from yes. My Windows Media Center PC oh, streaming that is too. Interesting. hooked up. I was streaming because streaming is it actually incentivizes me to go for longer. Okay. Having the chat to interact with keeps me going. They request songs and stuff like that, and so it 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 kind of it keeps me motivated <laughs> to to keep playing. I do not think that that was an entirely unreasonable thing for me to do, and it's the first time that I've actually even no, it's the second time I've played. It's the first time I've streamed. <laughs> I was not going to be like playing a different game otherwise. <laughs> By the way, we this is the first week that we haven't managed to film a part of the challenge. Um, I wanted to propose something to you. Can okay. we change it up and do the do regular stuff one next week rather than the get all the game launchers working one? Because I think we're both probably farther along on that one. I know you're farther along on the game launchers one, but I'm not. I'm so. like done that one. Yeah. Um, so can we do the like yeah. perform regular tasks one first? Because yeah. I've spent most of my time screwing around with that. Doing regular and tasks. Far so. less of my time actually playing games. In fact, if I had a gaming addiction, I think one of the best things that I could do for myself is install Linux <laughs> on my Linux, machine. Yeah. Because it turns it into such a chore to get it working that it's like, yeah. it honestly does take some of the fun out of it. Yeah, um, to and be there's clear, also like lots of other problems. That to are... be clear, I have not put a ton of time into solving some of these problems yet. So once I do, it is entirely possible that you guys will see, you guys will hear an entirely different tune from me when part three or four, whatever it ends up being, rolls around. And and also to be clear, our stories are quite different. We've had we've had very different experiences. There will be some similar threads. There will be some similar threads, 100. percent um i might be distro hopping really yep i've considered it already i but i've i've already invested so much that's the into that's like the, yeah learning i don't want to <laughs> manjaro things yeah and i've already i've already mm. set up so many things on manjaro yes. that then if i then have to not only figure out how to do on another distro I even just have to figure out how to do them again. Like I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of comfortable. When I need to install yes. an application, yeah. I can either use um, uh, Pamac, uh, which is right. their, which is their like graphical user interface version. Or for whatever reason, I can't find it through Pamac. I know how to use Pacman. I know how to override the by default blocked Arch user repository. I know how to go get things from there. Like I've, like I've kind of kind of figured out how to use my computer <laughs> i really don't want to start one, over one of my things and i don't want to start over either but one of my things is i've shown you i've complained to you and shown you at least once my yeah. windows lagging problem right yeah i finally was annoying. like i have to solve this i'm so tired of this because part of it was like i just started using um 
like maximize and minimize and stuff like that to move windows around more yeah. and snapping so that I wouldn't drag them because it was like actually just driving me nuts. But it got to the point where I was like, sometimes you just have to drag things. And it's really annoying when it just lags all over the place and it's like yeah. genuinely a horrible experience. So I dove into it. It's been an open issue on my desktop and environment since 2013. So I, I think I have to go. I cannot stay here. It is not home. I oh. must leave. That's so I think I have to like redo basically everything. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because there's still like more than two weeks left in the challenge. Yeah. Like there's a lot of... The, well, that's my whole thing is like, am I going to deal with this Windows lagging issue that I know I can't fix? Yeah. For a really long time, genuinely. And like, I, I don't I don't think so. No. All right. Some, and I, I, I've seen some comments uh, in, in Floatplane chat about it. And I saw some comments about this online. I have a really overly powerful computer. It's not that. <laughs> it's really not that. Yeah. Aren't you running like a 2080 Ti? Uh, uh, Titan RTX. So. Yeah. Okay. So better than a 2080 <laughs> Ti and a Ryzen 5950X. Tons of RAM. That is it's on an NVMe drive. That is literally as good as it gets. Every application loads directly off CPU the NVMe anyway. drive that Linux is installed on. Yeah. Okay. Like it's. People are saying switching desktop environments isn't too hard. It's just tedious. Yeah. I don't think it'll be hard either. I've, I've had a, a bunch of different... Um, Jaden even pointed out I'm using a different distro to Luke and I have uh, the same Windows lagging issue. I, I looked into it. Yeah. This is very prevalent. Right. This is a lot more There's than just the one I'm running. literally dozens of people with this problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I even... Uh, I... I yeah, I've, I've looked into it a fair amount. There's uh, just fix the issue yourself. That is a Linux thing, but it hasn't been fixed since 2013. So I don't think I'm going to give a shot at it because there's a lot better people that I'm sure have looked at it. Um, oh, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's on a lot more distros than this one with a lot more desktop environments than this one. There's, there's two that I'm kind of looking into right now. Um, I haven't decided yet, but we'll figure it out. All right, man. We've actually got a lot more stuff that I wanted to talk about today. Yeah. Did you see that uh, Carmack mm -hmm. apparently pushed for an yes. unlocked version of what? What was it like? What is it like the OS or firmware? I actually I only skimmed the article this morning when I was still groggy, but for the I just headsets. I just thought it was super cool because the Oculus Go doesn't have to become complete e waste the second that Facebook servers stop. Um, you know, providing updates for it or or stop making the store accessible to it. Like, you know, something like the original Nintendo Wii, you know, when you lost access to the Nintendo store, it's like, oh, well, that sucks. What if I just like wanted to buy more content? How hard could it possibly have been to keep maintaining this store? I mean, it's not like the hardware is changing. Yeah. So you could have just left it on a on a computer in a corner somewhere like. <laughs> Or, or, you know, you could take an approach like this where you let the community take over. This is so cool. This is the first thing that Oculus Facebook, ever since the acquisition, has done that I went and that I go and look at and I will go, wow, this is so cool. Like, as we wrote when Nintendo, oh, wow, this is funny. Ars Technica even talked about um, Nintendo shutting down the online servers for Wii and Nintendo DS back in 2014. There's no reason that continued online support for these consoles should be at the whim of a company that obviously has no financial interest in them anymore. Exactly. Exactly. They should take steps to release versions of their server code that allow players to run their own online infrastructure after the corporate servers are no longer available because this is going to destroy entire generations of not just gaming experiences, but of computing experiences. Like you can still go back and you can experience a Commodore 64 the way that it was experienced back in the 1980s. You can still do that. You cannot go back and experience a gaming machine. Like even, even going back to Windows XP, like the fact that so many of the gaming services were online, like you can't install Steam on it anymore. There are games you might've bought that you can no longer run on the computer you bought them on. Yeah we're losing not not just you know freedom as consumers we're losing experiences we're losing history, history here 
and it's this is a this is a huge issue in in gaming it's it's the most obvious i think in the mmo space don't do that. sorry <laughs> it's the most obvious in the mmo space oh 100 um, percent. because the second an mmo goes down it's it's all gone yep forever unless unless like a pirated community version comes online but a lot of times those are missing certain missing a lot of things because they're yeah. uh, they're usually trying to reverse engineer so they, they have to kind of guess how certain mechanics worked in a lot of cases they like a lot of the player impact um whether there there was really any or not um is is now gone like there's there's a lot of issues with it um so I'd like this to is cool. Honestly, I'd like to see it be a legal requirement. If the only way to access your yeah. service that your customer buys, that they pay for, is through uh, an online uh, an online server that that they run, if they shut it down, you have to they publish it. Need to publish it. That'd be really cool. I would be very enthusiastically in support of of whatever that law is. I mean, I'm sure if you're someone like uh, like an EA, for example, we can actually use this to transition into one of our other topics. You might not be super happy about that because why would people buy FIFA 2021 if they could just keep playing FIFA 2020 or 2019 or 2018 or 2012 for that matter? Like if they, if they don't really care about the roster updates and, and certain people will, but there's definitely going to be a financial risk to that kind of annual update business model if people can just continue to play the old games on community servers and not have to deal with the, the crap that comes along with playing it off of VAs. What not about, that it what will... about dealing with, um, oh. I just, I, I feel like we should dive down this topic a little bit. Sure. Um, because it's, I, I, I think I immediately jumped in support of that and I'm still in support of it, but I think there's some interesting problems in the modern world, uh, like transactions. Sure. Because you're still losing content, whether you're for that content or not. I think a lot of people, especially in the MMO space, when you have to buy the game up front and then you have to pay a subscription, sure. there's a lot of friction. There's a lot of people that don't like the fact that there's also digital content stores in pretty much all of those games. Um, but there's also games that aren't MMOs that are server-based that have like either microtransactions or something else. Yeah, how do you solve that? Because... <sighs> that would probably take the company developing a system that that makes those way better because you'd probably have to make it some form of like in-game reward which is what people want anyways so they'd have to like improve the game or they'd have to hand over it. the keys to this this transaction engine so that some third party is now making money i mean honestly that's an interesting model so basically what you do is you then say okay we're not going to support this game ourselves anymore but you have some kind of um reasonable and you'd probably split have to mandate something. this uh but you have some kind of reasonable split and someone else can take up the mantle and, and you have basically, to like you, ha you have to share your like income records or whatever yeah or with, what with the yeah or you have to or you have to license it or whatever the case may be but but basically you could you could create i think you could create a legal framework for this that goes okay uh, it could provide a, a number of different options but at the end of the day what it falls to is you have to license it to someone and it turns into like a reverse auction. So it turns into more like a consignment, like a consignment store. So you price it at whatever. And then if no one will take it, you keep going down, 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 down until someone agrees to say, okay, yeah, 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 we'll do it for that. And so you get these kind of tier two, uh, tier two gaming companies that are ultimately kind of maintaining these older games. Uh, I, th I think it could work. I think I'm sure there's problems we haven't thought of, but it sounds super cool to me. I'm sure there's a thousand problems that we haven't yeah. thought of. And one of the biggest problems that we haven't brought up is that you would need lawmakers that actually understand the issues at play. And that's clearly not a thing um, with the with the number of of not just boomers, but like aging boomers who just clearly have no idea what's going on in this high tech world that we all live in. Uh, that are that are in positions of power these days. We're going to get into something related to that in a moment. But first, let's talk about, I uh, used EA and FIFA as an example for a specific mm. reason, and that's because um, that relationship might be coming to an end. That's right. One of, if not the most financially successful game licenses might soon be up for grabs because the current contract between EA and FIFA ends in 2022. Yeah, if you're, just before you keep going, if you're not a sports gamer, which um, I find a lot of people either 
basically only play sports games and maybe racing games yeah or they they don't play those pretty much at all or maybe just racing games kind of float in between um but fifa makes an incredible amount of money on microtransactions um and there's yeah. some really interesting content online about that so Maybe something to jump into. So the partnership started in the early 90s with FIFA International Soccer on the Sega Mega Drive. Nice. Um, New York Times claims talks have stalled between the two to continue the relationship. FIFA reportedly wants more than double the cut that they were receiving before FIFA, the, more than double the cut they were receiving before. FIFA 21 apparently generated $1.34 billion in revenue for fiscal Q4. Fiscal Q4, that's Just a single Q4. quarter. This is a five- billion dollar a year business wow now to put this in perspective ea's full year revenue was wait a second yeah fiscal, this is this wrong. seems to be confused so yeah. hold on a second uh fifa 2021 revenue ea hold on hold on hold on hold on uh in its fiscal q4 okay apparently uh, this article that uh, was the sort of the source here made a mistake. Maybe they mean at the start of Q4 for the year it was 1.34. Yeah. I'm not sure. This is very um, confusing. EA's full year revenue reached 5.6 billion. 29% of that total came from ultimate team modes. Uh, full year. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Okay, yeah, I think something got lost in translation a little bit. So, full year revenue, um, for like, uh, ultimate team mode. Wait, what? Full year. Okay, you know what? I have no idea. The point is, FIFA generates a ton of money, billions. Um, and it's a massive percentage of their, their, their take home, but yeah, whatever. FIFA Ultimate Team. Buy packs, get player cards, make a team, whatever. The point is, if this deal, if a deal isn't reached, don't expect a FIFA game anytime soon because it'll kind of take a minute to make a brand new soccer game from scratch. Although they could partner with Konami or 2K, uh, who both have soccer games or European football, football, soccer, not American football. I don't know, whatever. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's get into this whole situation where the Missouri governor vows oh, to nice. prosecute the F-12 key. This uh, is going nowhere. Hit I'm me, sure. Luke. Let's do it. Uh, okay. Let's so talk about this. Missouri Governor Mike Parson, Parson probably, is vowing to prosecute the St. Louis Post-Dispatch after the newspaper uncovered a security vulnerability on the department, and it actually really is one, on the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, or the DESE website. The vulnerability... Social security numbers were being included in the source for pages served by the uh, teacher credentials lookup portal. Horrible. Super bad. Massive vulnerability. Uh, the governor described decoding the HTML source code. Bit, bit of an interesting phrasing there. Uh, to find this info as a multi-step criminal process. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to jail. <laughs> uh, referring indirectly to a browser's inspect element or view source function, uh, which is, you know, built into every single browser and is how the internet works. Um, yeah, big, big rough one there. Uh, therefore, the state of Missouri has declared war um, on the F12 key. The governor followed up with a tweet saying that it wasn't a simple right click uh uh, attaching screenshots of Missouri law rather than actually substantiating this claim in any way, shape, or form. Um, just in case you don't know, HTML is what is sent to your browser to inform your browser of how to do things. It is public. It is interpreted by your browser. That is why things like ad block and whatnot, other stuff can kind of work because it is interpretation of what is sent to you. That's why things can look different on different browsers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, uh, yeah. The server should not be sending this info to begin with. We're talking about the, the social social security numbers. Um, it, it, it shouldn't be sent in, in, in any way, shape, or form, obfuscated or not, encrypted or not, doesn't matter. It, that, that, that should not be sent. <laughs> like you, I, don't, I don't want the encryption key for my social security number to be sent uh, in, through HTML 
on someone's web page that would be that would be really stupid that'd be horrible even if it's encrypted My God. just why anthony's discussion questions on this are amazing how far could this go seeing as governor parson seems to be doubling down on being an really out of don't. touch yeah. um luddite <laughs> um can html source code provided by a web server ever be considered private information could this be legislated? It's a good question, too. And perhaps most importantly, should journalists be prosecuted for discovering vulnerabilities and disclosing them to the public? It's like, it's like uh, an author putting someone's sec like social security number in the index of a book and then being like, you're not supposed to look there. Don't look at that. That's illegal. <laughs> That's illegal. <laughs> I, I don't know. This you is, don't have permission to have This is ridiculous. It. There's no way this goes anywhere. I, I can't believe he doubled down. Um... I can't I believe. Can. Why are you surprised by this? Like in politics, oh. there's basically two ways of behaving. One <laughs> is you acknowledge you made a mistake and fix it. And the other is you to do what down. politicians do. Double down. You double down. Make some drama. I mean, to be clear, there. not all, not all. And I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into any kinds of generalizations, but it doesn't surprise me that much. Yeah, is what I'll say about it's that. It's disappointing. Hopefully, if this if this goes any further than it has already gone, it gets immediately thrown out by someone with an with an ounce of reason. Um, Can just I just say on. that I am determined to not be this out of touch to my kids? <laughs> like I will not accept it. <laughs> yeah, it it takes some takes some action though, right? Like especially um, when you get to the point of retiring. Like there, there's that whole thing about where pe pe uh, a lot of people's health just like tanks the second they retire because they just stop doing anything. They stop thinking about anything. Yeah. They just like shut down and the humans don't really work that well in that environment. So right. you just got to keep doing stuff. All right. My mom, um, I don't know if she's watching this, is taking an IT course. That's pretty cool. It's great. And she's like actually doing pretty okay. She published a website. I love it. It's pretty simple, but it's there. She knows more about HTML code than this guy. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Man, that almost felt like a regular show reference. Did you ever watch regular show? No. Oh, okay. There's this character, Muscle Man, and his his punchline for like every joke is instead of your mom, it's my mom. It's like, you know who knows HTML code better than this governor? <laughs> my mom. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. As if we needed more reasons, uh, we have another one to hate DRM on games. Oh, nice. It looks like Alder Lake may have incompatibility issues with older DRM protected games. Oh, my goodness. So this totally makes sense. Intel's developer guide states oh. that the problem is that older games that are no longer actively being patched include DRM that may get confused by their big little architecture because uh, some DRM uses CPU detection as part of its routines and big little is going to be confusing to it. And if you've been following the WAN show for a long time, you'll know that Denuvo um, and, and some other ones, but definitely Denuvo does that and to a big degree. So yep, makes sense. So Yikes. there's some questions here. Could we possibly get around this with a virtualized... Like a, like a virtual, like a kind of a transparent to the user. Hey, let's quickly pass through all of our hardware to a VM, except not efficiency cores because they're confusing. Could we run this in like a, a compatibility mode? Is that something that you know Microsoft and Intel could work together on? Uh, that seems possible. I think so. But you'd have to get Nvidia to play ball. They would have to allow uh, GPU pass through in that way. And I suspect that they won't do it because the second they allow that you're going to have people using it as a workaround to finally get proper GPU virtualization working on consumer cards. It, it is kind of a way that, that people have gotten around things in the past though. You, you can emulate different types of hardware. So, um, well, it wouldn't be emulation. It would be, uh, Nvidia allowing, their GPU cores to be sliced up in the same way that CPU cores now. They only allow it I on their I believe you can also do it with now. emulation, but you'd lose like an incredible amount of performance. So I'm, it wouldn't be a thing. I mean, if for it's only older games, really it might be time. okay eventually. Eventually, yeah. I, mean, I, I think this would be a really, really tough 
thing to do in in the near future. Yeah, I mean, you can emulate. Actually, you know what? That might be that might be a pretty good answer because you can emulate old CPUs already, but you wouldn't even have to emulate the CPU because your CPU you could just pass through. You could use virtualization for the CPU, and then you could emulate the functionality of the GPU, which might be somewhat easier to do. I've My understanding is CPU emulation is more difficult, but okay. don't quote me on that. I don't know. Yeah. In fact, I'd, I'd love it if there are some developers in the audience that could that could help point us in the right direction on that. Anyone on Floatplane chat? Uh, Luke's going to be uh, checking on it. I'll see it. For the next little bit here. Yep. Uh, there's a couple more discussion points here. Intel is apparently working with DRM providers such as Denuvo to ensure these new platforms are supported. So <laughs> that'll be great for newer titles that are still being patched by their developers. Yeah. But there is no telling what's going to happen to older games. Uh, so they're probably going to get abandoned. <laughs> is it going to be worth upgrading to Alder Lake if it means that you can't easily play a bunch of your older games? Uh, should the DRM for these titles simply be turned off? Okay, well, that's an obvious answer. Yes, 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 it should. Yeah, And that has happened. We know it's possible. Yeah, it's 100% possible. I mean, like, GOG is evidence that that is totally possible and totally a thing. According to leaks from Micro Center, pricing and specs for the Core i9-12900K are as follows. 16 cores, so 8 performance, 8 efficient, 24 threads, so that's 2 per performance core and only 1 per efficiency core, 3.2 gigahertz base, 5.2 gigahertz turbo, 30 megs of level 3 cache, 125 watt thermal power, we'll see. Uh, DDR4-3200 or DDR5-4800 and coming in at $669. Nice. That's a lot of money. That's that part's not nice, but the no, the, 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 the numbers the number nice. Is nice. Yeah. Uh, you know what else is nice? LTT Store. Hey, finally has gift cards. Yeah, that's right, my friends. Uh, there's no way Sarah didn't do this artwork. You can get LTT gift cards in various denominations: ten, twenty-five, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. I love that it looks like a mouse pad. And $250. That's right. Give the gift of LTTstore.com to your loved ones today at LTTstore.com slash products slash gift card. Hey, pretty cool. All right. Yeah. Um, you know what? There was that story that I said on the pre-show that I was going to tell about how it feels like people take my on-camera persona, mm. like when I will when I will tease someone or when I will get angry about something extremely seriously sometimes. And to the point where I kind of feel like there's some people in our viewership that cannot tell the difference between um, video content that they're watching and reality. And an example of this is I was looking back at one of our videos recently. It was on wake up tech. So it was five gadgets designed to help you wake up. And one of the things that happens in that video is, do you remember how we got on this subject? Like what it was that someone was mad about that I was sort of confused by? Like obviously this was a thing that was not real, but they were super mad about it. I think it was something in the pre-show, but no, I don't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. Anyway, the point is um, there was a comment on this video. Oh, oh, you said you were a genius. Oh yeah, 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 right, right, right. The number of people that hear me say things <laughs> like that and, you know, hear you say, well, I don't know, you always told me you're a genius, so I just assumed you were. You know, like, the number of people that seem to take <laughs> comments like that and interpret them as how I actually feel and how you actually feel, it, it just, it blows my mind. What do you mean? I do feel that way. Like, okay. communication is, is not literal, right? Like, there's, there's, there's tonality, right? There's, you have to understand the relationship between the people who are talking to each other. You have to... Assume the best of people, you know, right? But anyway, I, I can see that there's a lot of people that don't really seem to be capable of that. So there's a scene in that video where as part of our, um, as part of our B roll, I'm sleeping in bed and Alex comes up with a cup of water and throws it in my face suddenly. And I wake up and I start like screaming at him. And there's a comment that's like, wow, Linus really is scared. normally so chill, and it's really weird to see him so angry. <laughs> I, uh, and I'm looking at it going, thank you. <laughs> thank you, because that is, that is so flattering. Apparently, my acting skills 
are so Oscar level <laughs> that you cannot tell the difference between me obviously pretending to be angry. I mean, why would there have been a camera pointed at this? If I was actually sleeping, why would I be in the office? Why would there be a camera rolling? Why would Alex come up and throw water in my face? Why would any of these things happen? Sounds totally normal to me. If your brain goes straight to, this is an actual thing that actually happened and Linus is actually angry, you got to take a few steps back and go, hold on a second. How would, how would the chain of events <laughs> that brought us to this point ever have possibly occurred? I was if mostly it, just surprised you guys threw that much water onto a bed. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't that much. Like, and that was my main concern. I didn't, I didn't care how much water he threw at me. I just wanted it to be little enough that, A, it wouldn't like, cause something to grow in the bed or yeah. something like that. And B, if we had to do another take... It wouldn't be obvious that the bed was already soaking yeah, wet, right? Like if yeah. we dumped a bucket of water on it, you better get it right on the first take. And we've had problems with stuff like that in the past, right? Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I just, that was, that was the st a story I committed to tell during the, the pre-show, uh, which is on Twitch and Floatplane. Uh, if you YouTube viewers are wondering, what pre-show? Um, and so I, I said I would tell it, and I was, just, I was just kind of like I was flabbergasted, right? And it just... It reminded me of, of so many times that I'll read comments that people are like really taking seriously. Wow, this Linus guy, like, you know, what, a, what an egomaniac when you guys got to understand that I lean into that persona because I think it's funny. Like, can we all just can we all just chill? Like, you know, you know yeah, I, I think I'm a reasonably intelligent human being. But when I was talking about, right, in the pre-show, I was saying something like, yeah, because, you know, my genius level ideas or something like that. No, I, I don't <laughs> actually think I have a genius level intellect. It's just, it's just funny. It's just, it's funny to be verbally ironic, to say one thing and to mean another and to have everyone be in on the joke because it should be quite, it should be quite obvious that no one should actually be that much of a, of a like hot air balloon, right? And yet we have we I guess I guess it's not funny anymore because there actually are people who unironically do seem to think and behave that way. So maybe maybe I need to not make jokes anymore. Maybe jokes no. aren't funny anymore. No. But I no, I'm not no. gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. Jokes are still funny and if there's gonna be a handful of people that don't get it, then I guess uh it is what it is. Yeah. Um It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, Mitchell, I, Mitchell T. says, uh, that's why we have so many problems in politics, because people believe what politicians say. Yeah. Oof. Linus not realizing that this is hypocritical. Um, so, okay. I've read a lot of YouTube comments. Probably literally millions at this point. Because I've read thousands of comments on thousands of videos. I, I, I'm pretty sure, uh, let's say over a million, definitely over a million. There's a big difference between people that are, uh, that are in on the joke. You can tell. There's a big difference between people who are in on the joke and people who have not understood the joke. Because you'll often see the ones from people who have not understood the joke about things that aren't a joke. Like it was, it was not the punchline, you know? It was just a thing that... <laughs> you would have no reason to glom onto and be like, ha ha, I am big brain next level, ready for some r slash whoosh when people don't get how in on this I am. He he he. There's a huge difference between that and people who just seem to have no idea what I was saying or doing. Um, maybe they weren't paying attention, whether it's language barrier, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to be 100% in terms of being able to tell the difference, nothing's perfect, Text especially not people. Yeah. But I've seen enough over the years that there are definitely some people who completely misunderstand. And sometimes it's not even a comment on one of my videos, right? Sometimes it's a comment on someone else's video where I came up as a topic of conversation and someone will make a remark that's like, yeah, I stopped watching after, after X after it was clear that Linus doesn't pay his staff well or something along those lines. And it's like, you know, yeah, it's, it's 
it's funny to joke about stuff like that. Actually, when that became a significant PR problem for me, I was like, Luke, you need to kind of stop joking about that because yes, in the early days, like in the very early days of the company, and especially when you were at NCIX, which wasn't my fault, <laughs> I wasn't even signing your paychecks. Yes, you were making extremely bad money, but I really don't think that that's fair or true anymore. And I think that I've well, taken steps to make it not a problem. Yeah. So can we stop joking about this? Because some people are taking it really seriously. And between us, it was a, it was just kind of like a meme. But like, yeah, it, it did end up becoming too much of a thing. And so like, I stopped, but yeah. The, the one that I think we've managed to get away with is Colton, the, the Colton firing jokes. Nobody seems to actually take that one seriously, but I could be mistaken. Maybe I just haven't seen the comment about it from someone who actually is deeply concerned for Colton's mental health with this the only looming threat remember, of being fired forever. <laughs> like, Because I, uh, I believe I was the original. Yes, I used to fire me. you all the time. Um, the only thing that was annoying when that was a thing yeah. was when <laughs> random audience members would like take it too far. Right. And then it was just like, okay, just relax. Like, but like, can we just be bros and joke with each other? Yeah. Can I joke about firing him, and can he joke about me not paying him? And, and like, it's can actually you guys fine. Just let us <laughs> do our thing. Uh, Jammer responded, by the way. That's the person who made the comment about something. You were responding to their comment. Sure. Um, he said, "Well, complaining about people reacting too much to his online content, which is not what he's complaining about." Yeah. No. Um, See, but, this is an example but, <laughs> of like. Clearly, this is not some r slash whoosh stuff. This yeah. is like. You've just completely misunderstood what I was talking about at all. And, the, and then the continuation of that, uh, but now he's overreacting to their online comments. It's not about overreacting. It, it's about, like, yeah, like not It's not about understanding. misunderstanding. Mis misinterpreting, not yes. understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Y y there is, y y in order to overreact to something, you have to have, like, somewhat even remotely the correct reaction to it and oh. then take it too far. But if you just have completely missed the point, it's not an overreaction. It's just nothing. It's just random. It's just it's just putting words on the internet that have no connection to anything. I had completely forgotten about this, and I don't remember what video it's in. But Geomaster337 said, LMAO, I remember that segment where Luke got pissed at Linus and quit at the Langley house. I That was such a huge ego boost. I had people call me concerned about that. That was the biggest acting ego boost I've like ever had. <laughs> that was amazing. So <laughs> I don't remember when like when or why, but I yeah. I want to go ahead and I want to just kind of <laughs> deflate both your tires and mine a little bit. Oh, I'm not a good actor. Because, because when I was saying before too, you know, the ego boost it was for my acting skill, I just want us to all take a step back and go, this is YouTube where YouTuber apology videos are believed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, even the worst YouTuber apology videos typically manage a greater than 50% like-dislike ratio. It's crazy. Which tells you that half of the people watching it oh, no. bought that. I disagree. You disagree? I bet you a certain percentage of them don't care. Oh, okay. That's fair. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So my math is wrong, but I think it is fair to say that there is a significant, a significant amount of the audience that is actually so, so, I don't know. Is it ignorant? Is it disconnected? Is it, is it, is it optimistic? Maybe they just want to believe in the good in people. Maybe I'm just cynical. And that's why it's so easy for me to look at this stuff and go, yeah, if you actually cared, you would commit to some kind of, um, something some kind of uh you know self-inflicted punitive action or you would uh you you would do something uh, you would commit to something moving forward a lot of the time you'll have these commitments to something moving forward but committing to i won't do that again is you know i won't do that specific thing again is not reform that's just that's just oops i uh I got slapped on the wrist and I, yeah. I didn't like that slap. I, yeah. I want this to go away. Right. Um, you know, and to be clear, I have made apology videos. I have, but when I've done it, I've, I've done it in a way that I think was sincere because it was sincere. Or like I've done it in a way that I, I think felt sincere because it was sincere. 
the most recent example of me having to apologize for something was when, without doing my homework, I called out Tim Sweeney and Epic Games uh, for some of their claims are regarding the PlayStation 5's storage architecture. And my apology was sincere, and it wasn't just to Tim Sweeney and Epic Games. Uh, my apology was to you guys, because I screwed up. The other, the other thing is that I didn't wait. When I screwed up, I came and I owned it, even though it's something that I could have easily edited out the segment of the WAN show. Only, I think, the, the, most, the most upvoted tweet about the mistake that yeah, I had there wasn't made, a lot of traction. Had literally like a dozen or so likes. Yeah, like, there it wasn't very much traction. Like dozens of likes. This was not something that had gained a ton of traction in the community. And it was something that I could have easily just brushed under the rug. So the reason I made a video about it was because I felt terrible. I screwed up. That is not the kind of mistake that I should be making. And I want you guys to be able to trust me to, at the very least, I want you guys to be able to trust that if I make a mistake like that again, I will own it again. And so we can continue to have this relationship of mutual trust. I'll trust you guys to keep watching. You guys will trust me to keep making it worth your while, right? Like we, we rely on each other. So that was why it mattered. Um, or that was why, that was why it was, I felt it came across sincere was because I was. I wrote it myself. That was another thing. There were a lot of people that assumed that I had a lackey write it for me, but I had a writing credit on it because I wrote it. It was my <laughs> words. There's a lot of apology videos that you watch and you just go, you don't talk like that. You don't, you don't, no, you've never communicated like that before in your life. This is clearly something somebody else prepared for you and I don't buy it. Right? And there's, the, and there's also like, this is the thing where like, He's literally given an example of an effectively apology video that was legit. There are apology videos where they don't talk like they normally talk, but it's because they're breaking their persona and like yes, that's coming not to you the as, same as thing. really who they are. And like there is, there is some legitimate stuff out there. There's just yes. also a huge amount of not legitimate stuff. I also want to address something because I think I have a funny comment for it. Yeah. Someone mentioned about how my um, – my self-esteem dropped because of the acting comments. No, uh, that happened a really long time ago when I tried to be an actor when I was a kid because I am a son of my mother, so therefore put into every single extracurricular thing you could possibly imagine. So I tried to be an actor. I got less gigs than our dog. Um, at that point in time, I, <laughs> I knew that was not going to be a thing, and that was okay, and I moved on. <laughs> <laughs> that was the right thing to do, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Man, I can sort of act being angry, and there's no other. Yeah, you can do angry pretty well. There's like well. pretty much no other emotion yeah. I can do. Well, the thing is, like, the thing about acting is, that I've found, because just in appearing on camera so much, I've had to get better at it. The thing about it is that a lot of the time, anyone can do it. It's just when you're put on the spot, it's hard to do. Yeah. Like if I'm sitting having a conversation with a friend and I want to act mad at them or I want to act sad about, I mean, I just, you know, like if I just want to like, just like goof around, it's so much easier. Yeah. Whereas when you want to like be serious, you know, it like you can get 60% of the way there just by like acting like you're acting. Like that's one of the best bits of advice I ever got is pretend to be acting. Don't That's act. That's an interesting Just idea. act like you're acting. Yeah. Um, because that helps you elevate it to the level that the camera needs in order to interpret what you're doing. Um, and anyone can get 60% of the way there. It's, it's to get to that, that next level that professionals, you know, they'll, they'll have like these, you know, traumatic life experiences that they'll like call upon to like really get the that's miserable insane. and stuff like the that. The people like, that can cry on command. Yeah. Like, like that's, that's, that's next, nuts. that's next yeah. level. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's so it's so that like being able to do that like on command when the cameras are rolling when there's all this pressure and there's like 40 people around you watching you that's really hard oh, yeah. yeah and i think that's where you see this difference between the acting skill of of, of a youtuber or an influencer and an actual professional what is what is so i was actually do you remember those those funk <laughs> the jb crazy says it's because deep down you are angry luke <laughs> <laughs> do you know the um do you remember the funk commercials yes i do there's one of those in particular 
I think my hand gets like fused to the mouse or something. You did a great job. I was I was pretty proud of that. What is there an example of something that you're particularly proud of that you've done on YouTube that was more like acting based? Um hmm. Cuz there's a difference too. There's there's presenting and like putting a little bit more enthusiasm behind it instead of just your normal amount and then there's like acting which is kind of a different thing. I don't know. Not, not nothing that I can think of that's super intentional. I don't think I've ever done anything really good. I um, don't necessarily think I have either. But like is is there one thing that you thought you did better than possibly something else you know i don't know or honestly i'd probably have to lean on the community like i can think of things that i did that were really funny like i think that time that we did the bit where i was reading off of like a like a a, a, a hostage like i was held hostage with a gun to my head and i was like reading off a script we got me all made up like i'd been beat up and stuff um i remember this but i don't remember what it was for yeah it was for uh it was for an intel review because I basically like roasted them a little bit before that. Oh yeah. And so I was like reading this statement. We had a blue <laughs> gun to my head and I was like reading this statement to be clear. Intel didn't put us up to that. And if anything, I'm sure they would have appreciated if we Not hadn't doing... done that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, they've been great to work with over the years. Can I just say that? Like, man, Intel has taken a lot of crap from us. Some of it deserved, some of it not. And they, they've they uh, they've continued to work with us in good faith. They've continued to try to improve the products. I can't say the same for every company we've ever worked with. They make mistakes. They do. We make mistakes. They make they've made a lot of mistakes, but they they move past it. I, 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 res I respect them. They're professional is what I'll say about working with Intel. Um, but anyway, like I thought that was I thought that was really funny. Um, I was looking at something the other day. Oh, yeah. I, I was looking at the office fundraising video the other day. Whoa. I was looking at it because I That's was... That's been a minute. Yeah. I was working on my DDR5 script, and I was like, oh, I want to... Because, you know, in my mind, I wanted to open up the DDR5 video with, wow, it's been... Um, DDR4 has been with us for longer than you think. Like, when do you think DDR4 came out? Wow, yeah, what the heck? 2014. Yeah, I was thinking it was it was really early office, wasn't it? Because I remember getting new dims for a project and it being like a problem. 2014. Whoa, and so I opened that video with, um, you ever wake up? And so that's why I was looking at that wake up tech one because I wanted that shot of Alex splashing on me. So I was like, you ever suddenly wake up and realize, oh my God. It's been seven years since that thing I thought was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I, I'm using the splash and then I'm using footage from the, uh, the office fundraising video because we're all like baby face. There's like seven of us working here. Yeah. And it's to kind of put in perspective, like for those of you who've been watching us this long, DDR5 has been with us since Linus Media Group was working out of a house. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that that was that was the uh, that was the point of that. I think that I did a great job in that video. I think it was really funny. But like, I don't think I've ever done anything where I feel like, oh yeah, I really like I acted the hell out of that. I I really just don't think it's ever happened. Yeah. I'm trying to find the Funk Mouse commercial so that I can show the stream. Uh, it's on Floatplane. I don't know if it's anywhere else. Oh. I'm legit. I legitimately don't know if it's anywhere else, but it is on Floatplane. Got it. That makes sense that it wouldn't be live anymore. You know, YouTube just is full of such weird stuff. What What is this? What is this thumbnail? How does this have 9 million views? Like, I just can't. I don't know. I just can't, you know? Uh, if you can find it, that would be, that would be sure. great. In yeah, the I'll meantime, why don't I do some super chats? Sure. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, I might actually have another idea for where to find it. Nope, nope, that's not that's not gonna work. All right, let's do some let's do some super chats here while Luke works on that. Oh my goodness, there's so many. You guys are not supposed to send this many super chats. I need you guys to like I'm okay. Oh, how do I do this? Because I feel like a lot of people will say, yeah, don't send super chats because they know it's gonna prompt a flood of super chats. 
This is not that. I cannot read them all. I actually do not want that many. Okay. Thank you. Um, Luck Dragon. Build the far right oligarchal fascist PC of pure capitalist greed to offset the extremely unfunny socialist PC that y'all equated to communism. Okay. So this is a perfect example of a comment where um, <laughs> you're not the one whooshing everyone. You're the one who got whooshed. Yeah. The, the, the fact that we equated socialism and communism in that video is political commentary. We, the commentary is that so many people criticize both of these systems without understanding what either of them is. That's the joke. That was the whole joke. That's why we're like, her, 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 left, her, 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 her sickle and hammer. What? Oh, I know. I know. Please, I know. <laughs> And it was funny. You just didn't get the joke because you were the joke. Ooh. Well, what? Ooh. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... <sighs> Boom, roasted. That's like... And, and to be clear, lots of people don't get the joke because there's this hyper-polarized environment that we're all in right now where everything is immediately is immediately awful and the worst thing ever because it's it's the opposite of me and everything I and all my friends and family believe in. Like, no, no, there's room for nuance. There's room for shades of gray. Come on. Okay. I got it, by the way. Good. Uh, why don't I just get through these and then we'll, and then we'll yep. show your excellent acting. Uh, Javier Pan says, it's super expensive and the notch is ugly. I mean, it's no more expensive than any other like MacBook Pro. Come on. Sir, myself sent this literally like two hours ago before I complained about it. I know you don't like super chats, Linus. Stop. Uh, Isaac asks, what inventory software do you use to keep track of all your tech? I'm looking for some options. Uh, we're actually just switching. We were using Asset Manager, which is okay. And now we're using, what is it called again? It's, it's built on an open source system called Snipe It. We've done a very significant amount of custom work, um, but yeah. It's built on Snipe. It. Snipe it's very cool. I'm not trying to discount them. I'm just, we've done a lot of custom work to make it better for Linus Media Group specifically. We're still waiting on you guys to switch to it. But So yeah. Raven Rock, again, you don't get it. Raven Rock says, it's just a joke. Tell that to people like me where socialists killed thousands of people, lol. No, socialism is not, is not a system of beliefs that has anything to do with killing people. Don't buy into the branding. What you're doing is you're buying into the branding. Just because something is branded socialist. Say, for example, the BC Liberal Party, okay? The BC Liberal Party is, has, A, actually no political affiliation with our federal Liberal Party, which is extremely confusing, and B, is actually the more right-leaning party in British Columbia, compared to our other major party that actually wins any elections, the NDP. So you could say, wow, if only the liberals didn't do all these fiscally conservative things, well, screw you, liberals. But you've actually completely misunderstand, misunderstood what's going on here because our liberals are not actually left-leaning. <laughs> And even, even the whole idea of this political spectrum, this right and left, all it does is oversimplify things to the point where we're just trying to apply these labels that are not fitting. You can't just label things. You have to look at individual policies. A policy of killing people is not a socialist policy. That's a policy of being an asshole. Like, it's... It ha People are telling me to try to stop you, but I think this is an important thing for Lance to get off his chest. Uh, someone from Sweden saying our socialism yeah. is very different than Stalinism or whatever. Um, like, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in 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 Canada, socialist policies like like universal health care literally do the opposite of killing people. Like, they literally do the opposite of killing people. So. You've got to try to look past the branding. Thank you. All right. 
All right. Put that's stuff done. That's my that is my last on the subject. Whew. Um the extra port hater has to be Riley. No, not so much. Let's just let's just let's blitz through a bunch of these. Andrew says the webcam isn't important to me at all. I think I don't think the quality of your webcam is important in any context. Sorry, Andrew. Other people talk to people. So <laughs> Okay. I'm, okay. Okay. I'm, okay. I gotta stop. Okay. I gotta stop. Okay. I gotta stop. <laughs> You're all right, Andrew. <laughs> Antagonizing okay. all of our yeah. all of our most committed viewers. <laughs> Boom! Roasted. <laughs> Want to get roasted by Linus? Super chats. <laughs> send super chat. No, no. If you say that, they're gonna send super chats. I'm not roasting anyone else. <laughs> Okay. okay, yeah, sorry. No. Jake Eagle the Eagle says, Yo, Linus, oh. new indie game dev here. Been watching you guys since middle school. Completed my first build a few months ago. Finished cool. my second a couple days ago. Going to be switching cases on my current Sunday. Hey, love that you're enjoying the hobby. We enjoy the hobby too. It's freaking awesome. And, and we love it. Uh, thanks, Axel. Wants to know when we'll restock the black long sleeve, um, I think you mean short circuit shirt, unless you mean WAN show hoodie which is the one that I've been wearing. So the Wancho hoodie is on a ship. It's a matter of time. It's coming. Uh, as for the short circuit long sleeve, we've been trying really hard to get our own garments going, and it has taken some time, but we are getting there. We are getting there. All right. Uh, Dat says, hi, I'm not expecting this to get answered. If it does, cool. I'm thinking about upgrading from an LGA 2011 Xeon 8 core to a Threadripper 1920X running a Windows VM under Ubuntu. And I was wondering if it was a bad idea. Only you can tell me if you need more cores. If you need 16 cores, hey, go for it, buddy. Uh, the 1920X, I believe that's the 16 core or is that the 24 core? There's also something I've been kind of recommending to people lately. Um, which might sound lame, but it's not. Check out Riley's video on not running ultra specs in games. Wait, is the no, the 1920X is a 12 core. That's right. The 1950X is the 16 core. I got my I got my wires crossed. I forgot that uh Gen 1 maxed out at 16 cores. Um man, yeah, it's gonna be it's not going to be as big of an upgrade in certain things as you might think, but if you really need a lot of cores because you're big into virtualization, then it could be a big improvement. I do think the 19, uh, I do think the first gen thread rippers are a pretty good deal, especially because you can still get boards new. At least you could recently. I talked about this when I did the uh, the badminton streaming setup uh, video for the for my son's uh, badminton school. Uh, I went first gen thread ripper because boards were still available new, which means that used boards were cheap instead of the opposite of that, which happens when you've got the boards having been discontinued and the boards start to die, the CPUs are still working and the board premium starts to go up and up and up and up. So I, I found that it was a very good value for me, but your mileage may vary. Uh, Alex says, hey, random question. Has Valve addressed games that require a separate launcher regarding the Steam Deck? Um, I think that's something that they are working with. And yes, they have talked about, or they're working with other game developers and launcher developers. And that is something they're working on. It is a big issue with their 100% yep. of the Steam library is going to be compatible thing though. So. Uh, Matthew says, hey Linus, pre please bring the beanies back. You literally are teasing us with one as you speak. They're back, they're back. Yeah, the QC issues were to do with the stitching on the inside. We fixed all of the original inventory. So it's back in stock and we've got a bunch of new colors now as well. Robotech, about to switch to Linux. I only play VR. Might want to look into that yeah. real quick. Do a little bit of research. Yeah. Yep. Um, Pascal says, hey, as someone who's invested in a big 8K TV, will there be more 8K videos? Uh, yes, but I can tell you right now that given that we're switching over to 4K cameras for our production, it's going to be fake 8K. We'll just upscale it and it'll look fine because you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Got him. Uh, James says, now, not because like it's you, just because it's really, really hard to tell the difference. Uh, James says, as someone who daily drives Manjaro, I'd honestly recommend distro hopping. It's not beginner friendly and KDE isn't particularly beginner friendly as a desktop environment. I mean, what do you mean KDE is not beginner friendly as a desktop environment? I haven't it's heard fine. many complaints in that regard. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, no, there's nothing that's been like, oh, I can't figure out how to change my mouse sensitivity. There's nothing like that. Oh, Chris says, I want any idea when the backpack will be available. I'm not quoting availability on the backpack. 
Uh, Vishnu says, I'm on a cross-country trip on my new motorcycle, and the WAN Show archive is the only thing keeping me sane on the long roads. You guys are great. Shout out to Luke. Need more tech bros like him. Hey, Luke's a good tech bro. Nice. 10 out of 10 tech bro. Heck yeah. JS2K, in the US, I wish we had the guts to make all intellectual property go into public domain after 20 years like we do for patents now. 20 years is plenty of time to recoup, and no code should, uh, should run that long. That's actually not a terrible point. I, I don't know how it'll ever happen, but... Uh, yeah. All right, let's. Uh, we're are we almost at the end here? Um. Oh man. <laughs> Running into some painful <sighs> stuff. Yeah, my brain hurts. Want to watch a video? Okay, no, I'm gonna acknowledge one more of these comments. Oh, is it a political one? Josh's bookish voyage says. So if socialist policies <sighs> literally do the opposite of killing people, what does that say about conservative policies that actively fight against private health care? Okay, for the second half of this, I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe there's something specific you're referring to. For the first part of it, I didn't say socialist policies literally do the opposite of killing people. I said some of them, like universal health care specifically does the opposite of killing people because it's literally healthcare that literally keeps people alive instead of them being dead. You can't stop branding things. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. All right. Thanks, guys. Let's, uh, let's watch Luke's video. All right, I'm jumping over to your... Uh... It's not my video. Well, it's, hey, you helped. <laughs> this is, no, I don't want to I can do that joke. Our video? Yeah, very funny. <laughs> very funny, especially right now. You've done a good job of making funny jokes. We do good job. Okay. Here. I don't know if there's audio. Uh, it looks like it. <laughs> Just bailed. You did a great job. Thanks. You did a great job. He actually like hurt himself when he fell off that chair, which is pretty bad. I think so. Yeah, we shouldn't have we shouldn't have pushed ourselves so hard for some of that from some of that earlier stuff. <laughs> Sometimes um, pushing yourself too hard is kind of fun. Hey, aside don't, from don't do archived stuff like that, that's floatplane exclusive. Uh, there's some pretty good stuff on floatplane right now, including that's right, ladies and gentlemen, the first episode of PC or no PC, our totally non-infringing game show where people will either win a PC or not win a PC. Man, that wide camera, I asked them. I asked them, is it going to include this like crap down here at the bottom? They're like, no, 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 it won't, dog. Don't worry about a thing, dog. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. It looks so ghetto, but oh man, the feedback on this is amazing so far. So. Genuinely, yeah. Like a, a lot of the comments are super positive. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really good video. Uh, so that's up in early access. Uh, it's not exclusive, not exclusive. We've got the new server video up in early access. So even though we're not committed to a week's early access, we're still trying to we're still trying to upload things early. Not not least because the float plane audience does a really good job of telling us when we say something stupid and they've got our backs. So it's like, hey, thanks guys. <laughs> um, uh, what was uh, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Right. And we're still trying to build buffer. So we shot eight videos this week out of nice. a quota of six. So we're, we're, we're doing, we actually got some really good stuff shot this week. We did our uh, ROG X IKEA gaming. You know, there's an, an IKEA ROG gaming collection now. Yeah. So we did a full gaming setup with that. Um, we did Ed's Intel Extreme Tech Upgrade. So you know how Ed's sort of a weird duck? Yeah. A weird cowboy? His, his house is a reflection of his weird duckness. That's actually, I'm so much more excited for this video. It's the weirdest. Ed's style is really interesting. He's something. I love Ed. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I uh, Ed Ed is more than just an employee. But absolutely. I mean, I've been working with Ed for 10 years now. Um, I, I love Ed and he's a weird duck. <laughs> and he, he embraces style in a way that I think a lot of other people don't. And he embraces his true self yeah. in a way that a lot of people don't. Yeah. He's like, Yep. This is me. I'm a little kooky. Yep. So like, like it? seeing someone's house that's like that is genuinely exciting. Yep. I'm actually stoked for this. Yep. That's really I, cool. It's it is it is something it is something else. To be clear, I'm a weird duck. I get it. I get it. Um 
he's just he's a different kind of weird duck i think it's just creative types man i think it's just part of the industry that we work in like i think if you went to a different industry you might find a lot more people who are more on the rails whereas yeah creatives they just it takes a different kind of mind to think differently it really does and people that would like yolo into a startup yeah it takes a different it takes a different kind of person to go i am a few months from finishing my program Instead of doing that, I am gonna go all in on this weird YouTube <laughs> thing. Because it doesn't sound that crazy today, but you guys gotta understand this was nine years ago. It's really, really, uh, yeah, not standard. It was a then. different environment that Ed just decided to you know, only live once into. Like I, yeah. I, I love it. I love him for it. It's, uh, it's great. I think that's pretty much it. For the WAN show today, because the last thing I want to do is manage to get sort of, you know, debated into uh, more, into super more, chat more discussion. Yeah. Nice. More, more political, uh, more political chats. I mean, I just I don't think a, a lot of my views should be that contribute controversial. You know, just caring about people shouldn't be controversial. And you can't put a label on that because there's lots of ways that under the umbrellas of any number of different systems, you can care about people. And there's a lot of ways that under any system, by not caring about people, you can have it all go to hell. So if we all just, you know, and there's actually, people, there's, there's, there, there's unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Chat's telling me to stop you again. There there, there are there are conflicting forms of caring for people, which makes things a little bit complicated. Of course, but you kind of want that because that's going to drive things forward. The problem is when though is when both sides are not arguing in good faith, right? Yes, yeah. Because when one a, side wants the other side to lose, just because they want the other side the to other lose. Team. Yes, yes, yeah. That's that's not good. When both sides want the country to be better or the the situation to be better or whatever, um, but don't agree on things that can actually be a very beneficial situation. Absolutely. Yeah. Cuz at least it means that you are you're going to try something and then if you don't try that then or if it doesn't work then you can try other ideas. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. Okay, wicked falsehood, you're the last chat I'm going to read today. Oh no. Chat is whiny. Governments who kill people are bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no matter what kind they are. If they kill people, they're bad. <laughs> it's like <laughs> all right thanks for tuning in <laughs> governments who kill people are bad their own citizens other citizens it's all bad that's bad killing people is bad can we just can we please can we please agree on that thank you have a great night <laughs> bye <laughs>